there's a very big difference in between being happy and having things that make you happy. In the Western society, we have been raised with the belief that we need to have different things to be happy. We have been raised with the belief that there's always something missing, that nothing is ever enough. However, this isn't a very strong belief in the Eastern society. There, the philosophy is that people don't need to have things to be happy. They believe that happiness is a state of mind that people live in. So now, the question is, which one makes us happier, the Western or the Eastern beliefs? But before I continue, I want to tell you all why I started getting into this topic. So, a few years ago, my younger brother was diagnosed with a rare type of cancer. Nowadays he's fine, but his treatment lasted for over one year, and it was very harsh. The possible death of my brother had a huge impact in my life, and it made me reconsider most of the things I used to believe about happiness. Before, I used to believe that people could only be happy if they had certain things. And if they didn't have these things, then they could never be happy. However, now I know that these things I used to believe are very common misconceptions that most people have about happiness. So, after doing a lot of research, which included an article called The Top 14 Ways to Know If Someone is Truly Happy, and based on my past beliefs, I came to the conclusion of the top four biggest misconceptions that most people have about happiness. So the first one is that you have to be in a relationship to be happy. The second one is that you have to seem that you can make new friends easily and that means you're happy. The third one is that you have to be the prettiest, skinniest or smartest to be happy. And the fourth one is that you don't get worried or sad about anything because nothing bad ever happens to you. But as I've mentioned before, these are all misconceptions as happiness should not be defined by these things. Now let me ask you, do you really think it's a necessity to be in a relationship to be happy? Or do you have to be the prettiest, skinniest or smartest to be happy? I don't think so. That's why with this talk, I'm going to show you what happiness is for me and how I'm trying to achieve it. But before I tell you that, let's go back to the idea that people in the Western society have a different conception of happiness than people in the Eastern society. As in the Western society, believe that the process to happiness comes as the belief that happiness comes as the reward for doing something. Or in other words, that there's a process to be happy. Now, let me explain to you this process by using this very possible real-life situation. So, us in the Western society believe that the process to happiness looks something like this. So first, we'll get a job. Then, we'll get promoted in that job. Then, we'll gain $10,000, and after all of that, we'll finally be happy. However, that cycle will never make you happy, as it never ends. It's in human nature to always want more than what we're given. Therefore, if we believe that we can only be happy when we achieve something, then we're never going to be. So, as soon as you gain those $10,000, you still won't be content, because you're going to want to have $1 million, and then you're going to want to build your own company and it's an endless cycle of wanting more things. It's unhealthy when we base our happiness on an ever-elusive external goal. But what if I told you that if you rearrange that cycle, then everything could change? So to start off, before getting the $10,000 or before building your own company, you first have to accept who you are. If you don't accept yourself from the beginning, then you're never going to be happy, as nothing is ever going to be enough to satisfy you. This process will lead you to true success, as in this process, you've already accepted yourself from the beginning, which means that anything that comes your way, 
you will accept it as a way to grow and not see it as not enough. So now I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you the equation I use to try to achieve happiness. It's mindfulness plus realistic expectations equals contentment. But notice how I didn't say happiness at the end of the equation. Let's face it, no one ever is going to reach absolute happiness. Life is always going to have, to have difficult moments. So what we should aim to achieve is contentment with ourselves and with what we have. So now I'm gonna break up the equation. The first part is mindfulness. Mindfulness is the basic human ability to be fully present and aware of where we are. It helps us to not be overly reactive or overwhelmed by what's going on around us. Being mindful is a way of life, and a very big component of mindfulness is gratitude. Gratitude allows us to be aware and appreciative of the present moment. It makes us not take things in life for granted. By having a more mindful attitude, then it's scientifically proven that it will have less stress and that you will start having a bigger satisfaction with the things you have. As now, you're going to start being more focused on the present moment. The next part of the equation is having realistic expectations. So, one of the biggest reasons why we feel unhappy is when we can't fulfill the expectations we have. It may be expectations with ourselves or with other people. But having expectations isn't bad. To some extent, it's even considered to be healthy, as that way you're always setting new goals in your life. However, having unrealistic expectations isn't healthy, as they're a way for people to ignore the present moment. Having unrealistic expectations make people escape from the present to think of a better future. But what happens is that this better future may never come as the future is uncertain. So an example of this is when someone goes on a date. If the date turns out to be successful, then instead of enjoying that present moment, the person will start to create these expectations of the relationship in the future. But these expectations may never occur. So it's only been the first date and they're already thinking of what the wedding is going to be like or what their kids are going to be called. These high expectations only pave the way to discontentment. Unrealistic expectations are frustrations under construction. All of the things I'm sharing with you today are things I learned after a very negative moment in my life. The real reason I want you all to know this is because you shouldn't wait for the negative moment to happen to figure out all of the things I've told you. I want all of you here today to see happiness in a different way than before. And you can start doing this by using this equation. My invitation to all of you is to use this equation. It may or may not work, but at least give it a try. I promise you that if it works, you will start noticing positive changes within yourself, which will eventually help you become a happier person. Thank you.